You're about to see my proper one and a half hour training with Lorenzo Sonego, where I almost kill his girlfriend. How's that for a hook? Let's freaking go. What's up, lads? And wait, actually, before I start, if you want to be the first to find out about all of these awesome trips that we do, check out our Instagram page, where we post all of the most recent updates, as well as some really cool uh, vertical content mm, lately. So, yes, also here's my personal account. Nothing too fun there, but still. And welcome back to Gladiator Tenants. And in case you glads haven't seen the previous four videos about my awesome experience at the Dubai Duty Free ATP 500 event in Dubai, I will leave a link to them up over there. I've been warming up Andre Rublev and Daniel Medvedev for one entire week. Those... Those were warm-ups, though, but I've also done some proper trainings with some of the pros, including Lorenzo Sonego. Vlad's exciting things are happening. First of all, today I'm playing with Lorenzo Sonego, all right? Uh, Italian tennis player, you probably know him. He's like, I think, 20, 20 short in the world. Um, but what's even more exciting, I don't know if it's more exciting, but it's very exciting, is that I am going to be playing with him on the center court. So that's going to be super cool. Stay tuned for that. I headed out to the club and went to the center court and as I was entering the VIP section of the center court I saw Andrew Rublev practicing with Alexander Zverev. We were going to enter the court right after them. So I go to the tunnel leading to the center court and that's where I meet Lorenzo and his girlfriend for the first time. I asked him if it was okay for me to record the practice for a YouTube video. He was really nice and said, yeah, no problem. So we start the warm up and I actually didn't get the first few minutes of it where we did the half court warm up due to some uh, technical problems. But yes, this was my first time ever playing with such a high ranked ATP player. So that's one thing to be nervous about. This was also my first time ever playing on a center court in Dubai. Another thing to be tense about and plus the two dudes who played right before us, you know who I'm talking about, were still resting after their training, drinking water, sitting right behind me and I know they were watching me play. So the level of tenseness cannot be properly conveyed through audio or visual methods. All of our tennis bags were in one place so there were like 12 gravity rackets laying around just chilling and I was gonna make the joke to Andre and Sasha to make sure they don't confuse their rackets with mine but they left before I could make the joke. For those of you who don't know much about Lorenzo Sonego, here's a quick brief about the guy. He's an Italian tennis player from Turin. His highest ATP ranking was world number 21 in 2021. Current ranking as of mid-April of 2023, world number 45. Ranking at the moment of making the video, 71. That means that he went from being 71 in the world to top 50 in the world in less than two months. Gotta say that the jump happened right after he's played with me. Hmm. Nah, I'm kidding. Where am I? Either way, the practice would start like any other warm-up with, uh, you guessed it, a warm-up. First thing we did were just progressive rallies in the middle that went from very slow to pretty intense in just a few seconds. Considering all the mental pressure I had, I think I did a pretty good job of giving Lorenzo a decent rhythm to work on his shots. Although I do have to say that I was quite a bit less stressed playing with Lorenzo after some time compared to playing with Daniel or Andre, for example. And I think that might have to do with the fact that this was a practice and not a warm-up, so he didn't have any matches ahead of him and could be a bit more playful and relaxed, which was kind of taking away the pressure from me. Holding Lorenzo's forehand turned out to be a, a pretty handleable challenge and it was really giving me good confidence in my game. After switching down the line with his forehands just once, he tells me to start doing the backhand cross courts. Here, I gotta say that I'm struggling quite a bit to understand which one is the better shot in case of Lorenzo. His forehand seems to be pretty solid, but so does his backhand. He doesn't seem to struggle with neither. But I have to say that I might have noticed that his backhand might just be a bit more precise when it comes to quick direction switches. It seems like he struggles less when having to make the decision of switching the direction spontaneously and executes that switch better. That's just my opinion though, don't take it for a fact. I went to the net there just to see what his reaction was going to be and it was the reaction that I was hoping for. He kept playing to me instead of switching down the line cutting off the point to show me that I shouldn't be doing that. So that's always nice. In fact, Lorenzo turned out to be a really nice guy. He's quite shy but very nice. 
After I have moved the umbrella to create a shadow around myself and we took a break, we switched sides to warm up the volleys. He's got a really good touch and he's super quick at preparing the volley and after he was done warming it up, he asked me to throw some lobs. Okay, so usually when you warm up the pro players, you do go to the net, but only to play the quick shots for them to work on the preparation when they have limited time and stuff like that. But you don't smash because, well, there's no use for them to be throwing you lobs for the smash. And I knew that. But I just was in this pro warm-up mode rush, so when I was good on the volleys, I naturally went... Lorenzo was obviously surprised, but he proceeded to throwing the lobs for my smashes. I realized that I kind of messed up there and pretended like two balls were enough to warm up my overheads. But yeah, this was the only time in the entire trip that a pro helped me warm up my smashes. And now that we were both warm, it was time for some points. Okay, Glass, I just gotta say, oh my god, how fun was that? Because, you know, one thing is to rally with the big boys, but a completely different experience is to play points with them. My heart rate raised even more and I got super focused. And I gotta say, I didn't do too bad and even won a few of these points. So here you can kind of see how the game went. I'd play an approach kind of looking thing cross court and from there on we'd just play a point. Oh, okay. Oh, glad. By the way, if you want to get any of Lorenzo's gear, the link to his player page is going to be down in the description like always. Ah, should have made that forehand. But yeah, the link to anything tennis related is down in the description together with our discount code. So go check it out. Now you play forehand? So yeah, we then did the same thing from the other side. Oh, Glatz, by the way, are you subscribed? No? Oh, well, that's sad. But something really funny is coming. Check it out. So Lorenzo's girlfriend, Alice, is sitting in the corner behind them over there with a book. And now look what happens. She actually had to, like, dodge the ball. So good reaction because the ball was coming really quickly. Everything is okay, though. She's not mad at me. So, whew. How did I miss that shot though? Back to the grind again and again, just like with Andre and Daniel, you can see that Lorenzo's normal and comfortable rhythm is just way higher than mine. Just look at how he's gonna force me with his forehand now. It's not that I can't play at this level, I totally can, but it's just way more challenging for me than for him. He's just chilling. Look at how I finished this point though. After another quick water break, it was time to warm up the serves, and I decided to prevent the potential accidents. And after almost killing Lorenzo's girlfriend, I almost killed Lorenzo himself. But anyways, knowing where he was going to serve, as he was telling me every time before he did, I felt pretty confident returning his serves, and especially the second Thompson serves to the advantage side. So yes, I was mixing it up, but I couldn't serve full power because I've injured my abs the day before serving 40 minutes in a row non-stop with Maxim Cressy and they were really hurting on every single serve. Still tried my best obviously and it wasn't too bad. 
it was time for another game with points, similar to the first one, but here I was doing a proper approach and had to go to the net every time. And even though I had a massive advantage having that easy approach to his backhand, it really wasn't all that easy to win the point, especially when I had to do the backhand approach. So at this tournament in Dubai, Lorenzo did a pretty good result. He took out the fourth seed Felix Auger Aliassim in two tough sets and lost to Alexander Zverev 7-5, 6-4 in the quarterfinals of the tournament. So that's pretty good. Look now, the ball touches the net and instead of winning the ball easily, playing to one of the sides, he plays a super slow shot to my body so I can keep the point going. Which is very nice of him, but apparently I suck at volleying. Ah, almost. And you see there, as we're shaking hands, Felix is actually entering the court as he was practicing right after us, and with him came Thomas Berdych. I'm not sure how they're related, but it was kind of cool. Well, that was nice, feeling super tight because, you know, of the, the nerves, but still managed to somewhat handle it. Love the practice, the guy's nice, so yeah, time to eat. And so I ate my incredible lunch. Glads, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully learned something new about the behind the scenes of the tournament, maybe about Lorenzo or about me. If you want to see more videos like this one, check out the watch next section and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.